Race. It's something that's talked about on the news nearly every other day. It's something that people have strong opinions about and it seems to stir up a bunch of conflict. But when it comes to you, are these questions really that important? Should the church really be talking about it? What do you think? What should we do? So here's the question. Do the conversations about race really matter to you? Let's dive in. So one of the topics I care about is the conversation about equity and race. From Black Lives Matter to Charlottesville, there's been huge conversations around race the last few years. Me and my family have engaged in them ourselves and we're figuring this out. And these conversations have been around for centuries and progress has been made, but yet we need to keep talking about it. So again, the question is, do the conversations about race really matter to you? Does that question feel a little awkward? Yeah, of course it does. The conversations about race have been so heated, so divided in our country. I mean, it can't make you wonder, is, is, is it okay to talk about this in church? In fact, many people just try to avoid the conversation altogether, right? So there's kind of three ways people respond to the topic of race. So the first way is it, it kind of makes you feel uncomfortable. Either we feel like we don't know what we're talking about, so you know we don't say anything in, in an informed way, or, or we feel so hurt and angry that we, we don't even know what to say. When you're unsure if you have the right words to express your feelings, if it's uncomfortable, it's, that's tough. Plus, you, you may not even know if you agree with the adults around you on this topic. I mean, even adults that you trust, who knows? So, so how in the world do you feel comfortable enough to navigate this topic, right? The second thing is uh, everybody's mad, right? So so a lot of times we don't say anything because we're just like, man, look around. If you've been around this thing, you've, you've seen all the disagreement. You've seen how this conversation can get blown up. I mean, I've experienced this myself. So maybe you just feel like this is too big of a risk to even talk about. And then the third way, the third thing people respond to when it comes to the conversation about race is, they feel like the conversation is for someone else. Maybe you're saying to yourself, uh, I, I don't have a problem with race or, or this doesn't affect me, right? Maybe you think it's a conversation for someone of a different race or someone in a different community than yours. No matter what your hesitation is, here, here's something I think most of us already know. Sometimes difficult conversations are the most important ones. Let me say that one again, because we need to take this in. Are you ready? Sometimes difficult conversations are the most important ones. Maybe you've seen this with a parent, a step-parent, a friend, a boyfriend, girlfriend, teammate, coach, teacher, sibling, you name it, right? Uh, you've walked away from a tough conversation and you've said, that wasn't easy, but I'm so glad it happened. Th this is true when it comes to conversations about race too. All right, all right, you, maybe you're thinking, maybe you're thinking, come on, that I get it, I get this a big deal, but why are we talking about it at Apex right now? Well, we're not talking about differences in ethnicity or skin color just because they exist. We're talking about this because this is about how we treat each other. We're talking about race because for a long time, people have, have used race as a reason for treating each other differently or assuming that some people are more important than others. Am I getting real yet? Are, are, we, are we here? Yeah. Before we dive into this conversation a little deeper, we're, I, I just need to define a few terms so that we all have kind of a correct understanding moving forward. So these three terms that, that I'm going to use throughout this talk is, is racial bias, racism, and prejudice. And I think we need to get our heads wrapped around these because they're they are different words. They're not all synonymous, okay? They're they're two three different words that, that are, are important for us to understand in this conversation. So racial bias, Th this is when your bias against someone due to their race, right? This, this is when uh, they're every, you know, you have the same qualifications, you, you've pretty much, you're going out for this play and, and you both kill it and you're, and you're doing great. But then uh, one particular race gets picked over another due to preference. That's a, that's a, 
racial bias. So now racism, this is when there's, there's judgment, discrimination, hatred directed against another race based on the belief that, that one's own race is superior. This is racism. So do you see the, the difference? And, and now the third way is prejudice. Here's, here's the third. This is when dislike, hostility, unfair behavior comes from opinions, not facts. Did you hear that? Opinions, not facts. So for example, when, when you meet someone for the first time and you already have a, a predisposition, a, a negative thought based on what you've heard about people of their race, instead of actually knowing the person, like, come on. We all do this stuff. These are words that may, they may seem similar, but they're not interchangeable. These three terms are super important and we want to just make sure we use them in the right way. Why? Why do we want to use these in the right way? Well, because they all point to people who think and treat others differently because of their race. See, these ideas of these terms have, have been around since the early days after Jesus's resurrection. Now, in the early days after Jesus' resurrection, the number of Jesus' followers grew rapidly, which makes sense because he predicted his own death and resurrection and pulled it off. No wonder Jesus, people were converting to Jesus like crazy. Isn't that crazy? So in the, in the middle of this growth, the disciples, they were providing food for everyone so they'd have enough. Check it out. Acts 6 1. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. The early church, there's all these great things going, all of a sudden hiccup, oop, oh, oh, we're human, and, and there's a disagreement. Here's what's happening. The Greek believers thought their widows were overlooked and discriminated against by the believers who have the power to distribute food. They eventually worked out the situation, but we can easily see how racial bias has been around since the capital C church got started. See, fortunately, the early church worked together to come up with some good solutions. And in the same way, it's up to us to recognize problems and, and work towards solutions in our own time and in our own culture. Huh. That seems pretty cool, right? The first step in the early church solving their problem was believers deciding to care. Did you catch that? This keyword care. They, they could have walked away, ignored it, claimed it wasn't their problem. You know, it's been this way for a long time, right? They could have given up, claimed it was too hard, but they didn't. They decided that the body of Christ has to operate differently they really got and understood what Jesus taught. Oh, catch that church. This changes everything. Because they encountered Jesus, I think the earliest believers understood something about God. How about we just take a pause break and you think about what is God wanting to teach you about this topic? All right, we're back. Did you learn? All right, hey, hey, we have to keep asking ourselves, why should I care about race? Here's the thing, the most honest answer we can give is, is this, are you ready? God does. And how do we know that God cares? We know because he's the ultimate creator. Not only did he make everything around us, he made everyone ever created. <laughs> Race isn't some cosmic accident. In Genesis 1, God tells us that he made all humans in his image. If God's image is in all of us and we are equal in God's eyes, then regardless of our race, oh, we are made in the image of God, imago Dei. But there's another reason I think we should all care about race, particularly when it leads to bias, racism, and prejudice. Let's look at Galatians 3, 26 
through 28. Here, here we go. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Oh, that's so good, isn't it? By faith in, in Christ, we get to be children of God. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ. Like putting on new clothes. That's, that's cool. So the old is gone, the new has come. Okay, so here, here we go. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. You hear that? It doesn't mean he's, he's eliminating race. He's, he's eliminating gender. What, what it means is, check this out. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Let me say that again. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Isn't, isn't that so good? See, during those days, there was this big separation between Jewish people and everyone else known as Gentiles. And it had always been that way, but, but only in a way that Jesus could. He, he changed everything. He treated everyone like they mattered and invited everyone to be part of God's story. So Paul, Paul here, he reminds us that in Jesus, we are all one. Oneness means that regardless of our differences, we can come together in unity and move closer to our shared goal of bringing glory to God. See, Jesus' desire was for us to be for each other. Did you catch that? For each other, no matter what would normally separate us. We're called out. We're a different people. Here's the thing. Jesus knew that as long as we lived in this world, there'd be differences. People would always use differences to be an excuse to mistreat each other. But Jesus actually prayed that things would be different for the people who followed him, you and me. Jesus prayed for oneness. Paul wrote another group of believers, and this group of believers were in Ephesus. Check it out, Ephesus, uh, uh, Ephesians sorry, 2, 14 through 16. Here's what he said. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross he broke the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between the Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross. And our hostility toward each other was put to death. Look at that. Just back up a second. Through Christ's death on the cross, he united us so we could be one. And then, check out that last sentence, our hostility toward each other was put to death. Wow. We got to lead the way on this, folks. Paul makes it very clear, the Jews and Gentiles used to have a barrier between them. But because of Jesus, they can and should be one. So anything less than treating each other like they matter, that's, that's not the kingdom, right? Anything less than looking out for each other, that, that's not God's will. Like, we're a different people. We're, we're set apart for these great things that God has called us into. Now, here's the big idea. Because of Jesus, we can be one when we're not the same. How's this work out? Well, being one doesn't mean that differences disappear. Oneness isn't the same as sameness, all right? Oneness isn't sameness. Sameness means we're all trying to be alike. We're, we're disregarding that God made us uh, uniquely. If we're honest, many of us, we prefer that. When we're all the same and, and we don't have worry about bias, racism, and prejudice because we're all the same. And so we try to make everybody like us. And that seems easier. It seems like it, but it's not. See, maybe you've heard people promote the idea of being colorblind. Uh-oh, now I might be stepping on some toes here because maybe you've used that term. Well, it's, it's okay, right? We, we're all learning here together. We're just having a conversation. So when it comes to race, the idea is, I don't even need to talk about race because I don't even notice because I'm colorblind. But if we want to truly address these issues surrounding racism, prejudice, bias, being colorblind isn't just impossible, it's not even helpful. 
I mean, you gotta be able to see other people. It's, it's just, we're part of being human. Noticing is part of being human. And, and if you choose not to notice, that's just mean. I mean, like, come on, who doesn't wanna be noticed? Who doesn't wanna be valued and appreciated and celebrated? So, so noticing actually helps us take other people's experiences into account. It actually enables us to celebrate what makes us different. See, on one hand, we say we're colorblind and, and we're basically disregarding someone's unique perspective and experience. We're disregarding somebody's beauty. We're disregarding somebody's whole heritage. See, sameness and being colorblind, is it? that's not the point I'm making here. What I'm making is oneness is the point. And it takes courage to live as one when not everyone's the same. Oneness means living in awareness of our racial differences without letting them determine our value or worth. Oh, we get our value and worth from God. That's so cool. The creator of the universe, the one who purposely made us just how we are. That's where our value and worth come from. So let me say this another way. And I didn't write this next quote. It's way too intelligent for me to write. Reggie Joyner and his team got this down. So here you go. Are you ready? We cannot be colorblind. We can be color brave. Isn't that cool? Being color brave means not only do I see you for, for who you actually are, the you that's you, the one that God created, but I respect that our differences come with unique experiences. And although our experiences are different, they're just as valuable. And so I'm willing not only to accept those differences, but I'm willing to learn about them because I care. I'm willing to, to take that step forward and care. That's what the early church did. That's what Jesus changed about everything. He broke down the dividing wall and made us one. So even more practically, here we go. Here are two places to start when it comes to pursuing this oneness, even though we're not the same. Here you go, ready? One, pay attention to you. Pay attention to your thoughts around race. After all, we know that our thoughts will ultimately drive our actions. The way we think shapes the way we live. It's just true. So this week, examine your thoughts. Uh, do some reflection. Uh, pay attention to your thoughts when the topic of race comes up. Take, take a pause break. Think about it. What is your first thought? Is it, is it negative? Is it fearful? Is it, what is it? Start to do some reflection. Ask yourself, why do I think this? Uh, what can I do to change my thinking? Now, after you look at yourself, you, you could say, okay, number two, pay attention to others. See, regardless of, of what we see in ourselves, we, we wanna be open to the conversation around race so we can learn and, and make deeper connections with people who are different than us. Now, it, it's Black History Month here, right? It's February, I love this, right? It, it, I love learning about uh, other people who are different than me. I, I, I particularly, as I shared earlier, I love, love Black History Month because I wanna learn our true history. I wanna learn about our nation's history. It's not just about Black History Month, but it's, it's, it's a piece of our nation's history that needs to be taught, it needs to be elevated, needs, needs, to, needs to be leaned into. And so read articles by black authors, watch videos, TV shows, movies uh, by black screenwriters and producers, uh, read about Black leaders, inventors, pastors, watch Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse or Black Panther. Celebrate movies with, with black superheroes. Uh, take time to do the work to show that you care. Because why? Well, God cares. See, this question is not just about Black History Month. This is about a conversation about people of all different races and ethnicities. If an opportunity presents your, itself, um, start a conversation. Uh, with a friend, make a point to ask questions, uh, be curious, be a learner, um, pay attention to the stories, uh, be slow to speak, quick to listen, <laughs> approach these conversations with humility and, and teach ability. 
All right, let's take a break and let's have some conversation. We got some questions for you. So as you head out today, I want you to know that the hate, separation, division that you see in our world is not what God wants for his followers. He wants us to respond according to his example on how to treat people. Imagine if the world saw the church, the youth leading the way in this area. Imagine if we decided to care about the impact of bias, racism, and prejudice, and that it has on people of color for generations. Imagine if we decided to do something about it. Imagine if we were open to learning and increasing our awareness through doing some research and actually showing that we intentionally care. Imagine if we were open to leaning into relationships with people of color, to understand perspective and commit to fighting racial bias, racism, and prejudice together. I know it's not easy, but when we care about race and its impact on our brothers and sisters in Christ, we move one step closer to seeing what God can do as He changes everything. So, because of Jesus, we can be one when we're not the same. Let's do it again. Because of Jesus, we can agree on this, we can be one when we're not the same. Hey, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity to start a conversation around your word, around your heart, about this topic of race, but even more so this topic of oneness that you call us into. Uh, you care about each one of us, and so help us to care about each other. And we love you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Hey, Pastor Kale told me that he's got an amazing worship song for you to reflect on as you take this conversation in. Hey, click right here and come back next week. Apex, we got you live. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Dude, that was good. It was good.